Blake Christian is a partner with Holthouse, Carlin and Van Trite, one of the largest CPA firms headquartered in Southern California and one of the top 100 CPA firms in the nation, as well as the fastest growing CPA firm in the region. Blake, great to see you again. Very good seeing you, Mike. This time we're talking about marketing in a down economy. Why is marketing so important right now? You got to keep the revenue flowing and you got to keep your customers and you have to bring in new customers. In this tough economic time, uh, regardless of the type of business that you're in, you're going to lose some percentage of your customers. So you need to be active out there in the marketplace, let people know you're open for business, and you have to really refine your message to make sure that they understand that they're, you can create value while they're spending money. It's, they're going to be a little, little tighter on their, uh, their wallets, and so you have to really convince them as to what you're bringing to the table. So Blake, are there some types of firms that should be considering increased levels of marketing? Well, I, I think it's really across the board that uh, any, any business in any industry right now, and actually those that are in the tougher environment, uh, automobile dealers, um, restaurants, they, you know, the tougher the situation that they're in, the more they need to be out there in front of the public. Uh, so, th so it's really across all, all industries as far as I'm concerned. And what about service providers who have enjoyed high levels of sales in recent years? Right, well, ho hopefully they stockpiled a little bit of cash from, uh, from those good years, but those that didn't um, can still, you know, refine their marketing program and, uh, and should really be out there because service businesses, it is a very personal service type relationship. And so you do have to really be highly visible to make sure that you can ride out this storm. Is good marketing then necessarily costly? I think there's a huge misconception amongst business owners that that marketing and advertising requires a lot of dollars. Um, in its simplest form, I always say that you know your biz business cards are the cheapest form of advertising, and uh, I make sure my employees, whenever they're out and about, that they have a pocket full of their business cards, and uh, you you leave those behind every time you meet somebody. And again, that's just, you know, it's branding your company image. It's, uh, it's uh, making it easy for them to contact you in the future. So that's, that's a, in its simplest form, a business card. Another cheap way is press releases. You have to have something interesting to tell the press, but there's no cost. Uh, you can develop it. You can refine the message and get it out there in the marketplace. And it's essentially free advertising. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that. And what about some tips for stretching the marketing dollar? Well, what, what I'm telling clients and what we're doing as a firm is we're spending less money on, on branding campaigns and a lot more on very targeted messages. And, uh, and the focus is the cost benefit and you know, why somebody should do business with our firm rather than another firm. And that's, you know, again, I think crosses all industry lines uh, for others. And so, uh, again, the, the types of ad campaigns would be direct uh, uh, web-based advertising through Google Ads, uh, who, who you can get right to your audience. It could be sponsoring seminars so that your name's af affiliated with it because you know that that's your target market. Uh, also very low cost ways you can sponsor the local Little League team. Uh, also trade journals are amazing bargains. Uh, I recently ran across a situation, didn't advertise in it, but I, I noticed that a, a national uh, Ferrari Club magazine, it costs $400 to add a full page color ad in in getting that very high-end target market. So if you shop around, you can, you can get to very high-end customers without spending a fortune. And if somebody wants to find out more, Blake, how do they do that? I can be contacted at 562-216-1800 or our website is www.hcvt.com. Blake, thanks very much. Thank you. Cambrian is a non-medical home care company since 1996 with offices throughout Southern California.
providing in-home services such as bathing, grooming, light housekeeping and meal preparation for seniors, developmentally disabled and post-surgery. Our caregivers are our employees. In the event of injury, the homeowner's insurance is not liable and no need to worry about payroll taxes. We take care of all of it. We work with many cultures and have a high percentage of Spanish speakers. Our caregivers are local and have completed a very unique training program. Our experience and dedication makes us the right choice. Call us 877-390-4300 anytime. Coldwell Banker Real Estate's luxury home marketing program continues to build its success through the Coldwell Banker Previews International Program. Through the Previews Program, Coldwell Banker has represented an impressive array of the world's most fabulous real estate. Brian Selim is a sales associate with Coldwell Banker Previews International in Brentwood. Brian, nice to see you again. Nice to see you, Mike. What's a short sale? Primarily a short sale is when a homeowner uh, is requesting the bank take a loss on the property as far as the loans. The value of the home is below the total encumbrances on the property. Mm -hmm. including, it could even include uh, closing costs that might uh, be involved as well as um, property taxes or other missed payments need to be calculated into that uh, concept of whether the bank is going to have to forgive debt. So how do homeowners find out if their property is a potential short sale? First off, the question should come up for the homeowner when they feel like they might be missing payments, mm -hmm. when that time might come up. And then the way they could find out is they can call a, a short pay specialist, mm -hmm. a realtor who's a short pay specialist, mm -hmm. ask them to help them to investigate that. And the realtor can go through a title company and other documentation that the homeowner could provide to help them establish whether they would be a candidate for a short pay. So what options do they have if, they, if they're starting to miss payments? Well, hopefully they have contacted a specialist, a realtor who's a specialist in short pays prior to missing payments. They really should be contacting somebody, hopefully two to three months before they've missed them because most people will get the feeling that this is going to happen. Now once, once that happens, uh, the process should be that they first attempt to do what is called a, a loan preservation. They should communicate with their bank to try to restructure the loan that they have. Mm -hmm. That would be the first step. And then the bank oftentimes will come to them, either modify their interest rate, reduce their principal uh, amount, uh, and this could be uh, modified for a period of 3 to 18 months is usually the trend. Now, if for some reason they're unsuccessful at uh, establishing uh, uh, the loan preservation, then they can go and try to market the property for sale. Mm -hmm. And if the property, again, is valued less than the encumbrances, then you have a short pay. Um, then they would follow that process by again contacting a realtor who would be a specialist in that. Mm -hmm. And the next step would be that they may, if the bank again turns down the short pay, which happens, uh, then they can do what is called a deed in lieu of foreclosure, which is not as intrusive on their credit as having an actual foreclosure. And then the foreclosure of course is uh, the element that would happen next. And the average time for a short sale? The average time for short sales, well, the short sale process mm -hmm. uh, is four to six months on average, I'd say. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's quite a long period of time, uh, and uh, through Colwell Banker and programs that I'm working mm -hmm. on uh, and, and the banks directly working with the banks, trying to create a better time frame for those processes so that we get those sped up a bit. So how is then Colwell Banker uh, residential brokerage working with the banks to, to streamline the process? Well, what we've done is we've put together a, 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 a package that has consistency so that throughout the country when the banks see um, a package that we have to submit you know, to present to the bank the short pay, uh, that is consistent now. Now they'll know where to go to to look for different parts of the documentation. It creates a more professional uh, aspect to that. And we are trying to professionalize uh, having certified agents 
that are short pay specialists so that they know all the intricate processes that are involved in getting these done. So the whole object of it is to professionalize it through the banks and through the whole system so that we can get a better result for the consumer because that's the most important thing here. People are suffering and through these programs they will suffer less and it will have a less of an impact on their credit to be successful with the short pay process. It shores up the economics in any community that they're being done. The banks are benefiting because the properties are not losing as much value. What my statistics I found is that it's taking a year from the time they could have taken a short pay to the time they actually foreclose and the average loss in value is 30 percent. Wow. Well they've got foreclosure costs you know intrinsic ones but not to mention the value of the home is in a downward market so the values are going down every day that it's not being sold then you've also got issues when the property is left vacant mm -hmm. through people vandalizing it and the property falls into disrepair certain elements like even the curb appeal of the lawn that in itself creates blight in the neighborhood and then there's a lesser uh, value feel and and people you know when people are able to move through a short pay the homeowner's still there he's still you know taking some pride in the property as it transfers exactly. so it's a significant difference if somebody wants to say have a talk to you about this discuss these things how do they get hold of you well they should call me directly at 310-442-1644 and i'll be happy to discuss any matters that they have and direct them in the right direction or a website too well a website wlaproperties.com mm -hmm. they could reach me through there but also there is a government organization that was established at 888 995 hope mm -hmm. and you can call them and they're free mm -hmm. that service is free they will help you with loan preservation mm -hmm. they don't deal with the other aspects of a short pay mm -hmm. and the other value uh, should be noted to the consumer that they're the realtor is the only source they could go to that is only going to get paid if they're successful mm -hmm. at achieving the results there's other um, business professionals, but they all charge. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of scam artists out there. No one should be giving money to anybody up front on these things, mm -hmm. uh, in my eyes, unless you're dealing with certain circumstances like fraud and you need an attorney. Mm -hmm. But that 888-995-HOPE uh, is the first step. They could probably direct you best through any direction you have to go, as well as the realtors, especially the short pays. Mm -hmm. Some great advice, Brian. Thank you very much. Sure. Robert Brugman is Executive Director of the Avenues of Art and Design Business Improvement District in West Hollywood. And Robert, nice to see you again. Good to see you again. So tell us about your biggest event, the 12th Annual Art and Design Walk. So the Annual Art Walk is basically an open studio tour where people can come and share experiences and community and walk around the district. So 300 member businesses are open to the public, whether they sell furniture or clothing or gifts or textiles and you can walk into a place that you've always wanted to go into maybe you were afraid to go in but the doors are open and you can learn about all kinds of interior design all kinds of clothing it's uh, the last Saturday in May it's from 4 to 8 p.m. all of the events are complimentary we will have hospitality stations located throughout the district which you can walk from Doheny down Melrose, down Robertson, or all the way to La Cienega. People will be there to direct you and show you around. Um, so you just really, it's sort of an exploration and a day of discovery for people who want to learn more about what is in that storefront and what do they tell me about tile and how do I learn more about Italian cabinetry. It's actually a very exciting um, kind of exp day of exploration. So what are its objectives and what does it mean for participants and for West Hollywood? Well, first and foremost, it's a day of community for the residents of the city of West Hollywood and people of Los Angeles to come and discover stores and resources that they may not otherwise experience. It's a day of celebration of all of the products and services and the quality of workmanship that we offer here in the district. It's from 4 to 8, the last Saturday of May every year. Um, it's a free event open to anyone who wishes to attend. New this year, we're going to have some uh, street closures where we'll have some activities for children and for families. Um, we're going to have uh, some other programming, book signings, lectures, demonstrations that'll be timed so you can plan your day accordingly. Three o'clock, I want to be here. Four o'clock, I want to go to this book signing. Five o'clock, I want to go to this product demonstration. So we try and encourage people to cover more ground by giving them different timed activities to join in. What sorts of activities are included and what's so special about this year's event? 
We're going to have some lectures about uh, resources within the district so you can learn about Japanese plumbing and why they're the most successful people at making toilets in the world. You can learn about stone and the difference between stone and tile. You can learn um, about different products that are demonstrated and learn about carpets. And then you can also shop. You can go to Kitson and buy gifts or clothing. You can have makeup or hair, hair blown out. All kinds of things will go on. Um, the newest things this year is really about the time schedule and the hour for the children and the families. And then we're going to have another program called Art Walk After Dark, which will be from 9 to 11. And you'll have to go to our website to learn more about that. And what about the benefits for sponsors? Well, the benefits for the sponsors, obviously, is um, you get to work with the 300 member businesses and you're positioned to talk to 10,000 people who chose to join us that day. So in terms of an audience that's self-selected to be here, it's an upscale, aspirational consumer who's interested in consumer products. I mean, that's what we do in the district is we sell things. We are in the business of business. So people who want to learn about art, people who want to learn about furniture, people who want to learn about clothing, generally speaking, are interested in spirits and automobiles and other products that sponsors wish to sell. So by communicating that you're participating with them in this event, your brand has the halo effect of the quality, service, workmanship that our brand provides. And what about other events such as Tables of Ten? Well, Tables of Ten is the Friday night prior to the Art Walk, and that is a ticketed event that's a benefit for Inner City Arts, which is a wonderful organization in downtown Los Angeles, which gives arts education to children in schools that have not had funding for arts education for the last 25 years. These children learn to paint and to make pots and to do theater and to sing and to dance and play musical instruments through these funds. And so what we do is we pair 15 chefs with 15 designers who create these amazing tables and amazing one-time only menus. And then the six of you will join the designer and join the chef at the table. And so while you're having the meal, you're actually eating with the people who created the celebration that you're enjoying. It's a wonderful, amazing, custom event. It's a spectacular experience, um, very different than any other charity event I've ever been to. I mean, it's for a wonderful cause, and it's a one-of-a-kind thing. You can't miss it. And if somebody wants to find out more about the avenues of art and other events, how do they do that? They can contact us via our website, www.avenuesartdesign.com. Robert, thanks very much. Glad to be here. Cambrian es una compañía no médico de cuidado en casa desde 1996, con oficinas a través del sur de California que proporciona los servicios a domicilio para asistencia en bañar, cuidado personal, limpieza en casa y preparación de comida para ancianos, personas con deficiencias mentales y cuidado después de cirugía. Nuestros trabajadores son nuestros empleados. En caso de herida, el seguro del propietario no es responsable y ninguna necesidad de preocuparse por impuestos de paga de los empleados. Nos encargamos de todo. Tenemos un porcentaje alto de empleados que hablan español. Nuestros trabajadores son locales y completaron un programa de capacitación muy extraordinario. Nuestras experiencias y la dedicación nos hacen la elección correcta. Llámenos a cualquier hora, 877-390-4300. The Regional Hispanic Chamber of Commerce's mission is to advocate, promote and facilitate the success of businesses in Southern California and its trade areas. Sonia Gomez is a director of the Chamber and responsible for the downtown area of Long Beach. Sonia, great to see you. Nice to see you too. Beautiful restaurant this. Thank you very much. Uh, our beautiful restaurant has been around for 18 years now. We're in a historical building called the Clock Tower here in beautiful downtown Long Beach. It's uh, considered a historical landmark. So how is the regional area being affected by the tough economic climate? Uh, in many ways, we are being affected as uh, everyone else throughout the states. Uh, 
especially our area, we're in a convention zone, which we see is the first place to be targeted. Uh, people aren't coming out as much as they like to or as much as we would like them to. Uh, the tourist has a little bit uh, been slimmer than normal. Mm -hmm. uh, the overall spending, we're considered a high-end restaurant. We have high-end restaurants, we have regular restaurants as well, and we see that the people aren't spending as much as they would normally because of the economy. Are the areas more severely affected than others? Absolutely. Um, because we're in a convention zone, we realize that the first target would be retail, restaurants, the extra luxuries that people aren't going to be spending this much and that would be our whole area down here. It's a, uh, an area that has been uh, affected at least 30 percent with the economy. And what about chamber member businesses? In this area, in part of our Hispanic chamber group, there are all sorts of businesses, whether it be the retail, restaurants, um, and of course we all try to help each other and with the economy the way it is, Recently, we noticed that we're not getting a lot of the, uh, the traffic uh, for either, either sides. Sonia, tell us about the initiatives and programs that can assist members. The great things that we're finding, there's a lot of resources that we maybe as restaurateurs aren't aware of. And with the Chamber, we find other avenues to promote the area, whether it be networking, whether it be finding some loans out there to help get us back on track. Uh, the Chamber is very useful in those tools. They also help in making different events for our area that help promote business. Uh, most recently, we had an event uh, that brought people down here from all parts of the city, other chamber groups, uh, to introduce them to our area in hopes to start off a little bit more of a collaboration uh, of businesses and, uh, in, and to target our area that maybe has been overlooked by other people in the past. Let's talk about the strategies for specific areas such as downtown. We currently have a new um, committee we just formed. We started a historical Pine Avenue committee and uh, we realized that we weren't really uh, emphasizing on a lot of things that we have that are wonderful down here that perhaps would bring us more of a closer community. Um, we uh, have this chamber group helping us uh, redevelop some ideas of how to market ourselves. The Hispanic Chamber of Commerce put together a Havana night theme that was a lot of fun. We had people coming down here uh, that, again, had not even really visited our area before um, for various reasons, mainly not knowing that we were out here. Uh, the group put together a night in Havana where people could come down here and taste a little bit of everything that was going on, uh, different restaurants, little uh, samplings of different foods. Uh, uh, they got a ticket, they went into every establishment. And that was important because a lot of these people might not go into, let's say, a, a Spanish restaurant because maybe there wasn't the interest. They might not go into um, uh, a sports bar. And with this event, it brought a lot of recognition to what everyone else was doing. and. Uh, and it, it definitely helped boost up a night that we would have probably seen very small numbers. So if somebody wants to find out more about the Chamber, how do they do that? We do have a wonderful web page, um, the hispanicchamber.org, uh, that they can dial into. Sonia, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Cambrian is a non-medical home care company since 1996 with offices throughout Southern California providing in-home services such as bathing, grooming, light housekeeping and meal preparation for seniors, developmentally disabled and post-surgery. Our caregivers are our employees. In the event of injury, the homeowner's insurance is not liable and no need to worry about payroll taxes. We take care of all of it. We work with many cultures and have a high percentage of Spanish speakers. Our caregivers are local and have completed a very unique training program. Our experience and dedication 
makes us the right choice. Call us, 877-390-4300, anytime. West Hollywood, known as the Creative City, is the home of the Max Center for Art and Architecture. The Max Center for Art and Architecture at the Schindler House has been making a unique contribution to the artistic and cultural landscape of Los Angeles. The house uh, was designed and built by Rudolf Schindler, in, designed in 1921 and built in 1922. Uh, Schindler had arrived in Los Angeles because he was working for Frank Lloyd Wright. So Schindler came here, was managing Wright's projects, and decided to sort of settle down here and, and take up a practice. So he and his wife, uh, along with another couple, built this house uh, in West Hollywood. And the house was designed to be a house for two couples with a shared kitchen. So it was really sort of not only as an experiment in construction and architecture, which it clearly is, it's all concrete and kind of very minimal, um, but it was also a social experiment. It was this idea that if people lived together and shared cooking and shared domestic responsibilities, everyone would be, get more work done and they would be able to be more creative um, and so on. And so they really set up this whole environment here, which was conducive to uh, thinking, working, being creative. There was a lot of salons. Pauline Schindler was very active uh, in the arts and also in politics. So the house itself became sort of a center for the avant-garde in Los Angeles from the 20s really through the 50s. So Kimberly, tell me about this house and how it, it, it's now a museum. Right before Pauline Schindler died in 1978, she set up a trust so that the house would be protected after her death. Uh, then in the mid-90s, uh, Peter Nover from MAC, which is the Museum of Applied Arts and Contemporary Arts in Vienna, became interested in, in Schindler and what Schindler was doing in Los Angeles. Schindler was an Austrian emigre and struck up a, a, an agreement with the Friends of the Schindler House to run the MAC Center for Art and Architecture, a satellite of the MAC Vienna, out of the Schindler House. Uh, where we would do programs and uh, exhibitions and all kinds of activities relating to art and architecture. So it became a sort of marriage between a local nonprofit entrusted with preserving this important house and an uh, international museum who was very interested in architecture and specifically in Schindler. All of which is meant to keep the architecture alive and not actually make it into sort of just a house museum, but engage it with contemporary thought and action and activity and, and in that way sort of be sort of true to Schindler's spirit, who was very much, a, was a very progressive guy and a very progressive thinker. So it was not about freezing him in time, but it was about keeping his legacy going in a very active contemporary way. Tell us about the sort of programs that you have here. We focus on modern and contemporary art and architecture and related disciplines. So, and with a, with a strong emphasis on experimental work. LA is a really interesting place in terms of both art and architecture. There's a lot going on in both fields. There's a lot of innovation. There's a lot of, there's a kind of freedom of intellectual movement here, which I think Schindler identified with and which still exists today. So for us, it's actually quite easy and, and always really interesting to take advantage of that atmosphere and bring practitioners in here who are doing really interesting work. So Kimberly, how important is this center for Los Angeles? It is a jewel. I think that it's this little place that's kind of hidden behind the bamboo. You can't even see it from the street, but it becomes this very important meeting point for all kinds of thinkers, all kinds of creative people, all kinds of people who are just interested in art and architecture. And uh, I think because of the scale of it uh, and because of the sort of innovative projects that we do, there's really no place like it and, and everyone should visit the house and the grounds.